Hello and welcome to Cooking with Dr. Dewey Stevens. Although today we are not going to be doing much cooking, we are doing a special episode. We are making kombucha. Um, for those of you who don't know, kombucha is essentially just a fermented tea. Um, we're going to be making some tea, we ferment it um, through the use of a what's called a SCOBY. Uh, S-C-O-B-Y. Uh, it's an acronym and I'm pretty sure it stands for something like a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, I believe is the correct um, uh, acronym. You can order these SCOBYs right online. They will come in a little pouch um, a little, and you'll see that they'll, <laughs> they're kind of gross. They kind of look like a, uh, some sort of jellyfish. Uh, especially as they grow over time, they will they will continue to grow and get big, and they have kind of all the gross. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm not making this sound very appetizing anyway. It'll, the yeast kind of little tentacles, so it doesn't look like this big jellyfish in a jar. They continue to grow. You can split them apart and then give them to your friends, and give your friends a, a weird jellyfish bacteria culture for their birthday if that's you know if that's their thing maybe maybe it is maybe it isn't um, but basically what it does is it ferments the tea uh, into a um, into a beverage that um, uh, a sort of a, a probiotic beverage if you will um, it, it lends a nice flavor uh, it's good for gut health uh, it's, it becomes a little fizzy it's just a fun thing to do but essentially what you need is a scoby um, some tea and um, really pr preferably black tea. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not exactly sure. The SCOBY really, um, and it, because it has a lot of yeast in it, it, it's the sugar, hence the sugar. Um, but it really enjoys, the SCOBY itself enjoys all the tannins in black tea. Uh, just a sort of a plain black tea. I'm gonna add a bit in a little green tea. I've got a, a variety of different black teas here. Um, you can use just, a, a, just one black tea. You don't have to use a bunch like this. I happen to have a bunch and I like a little variety of flavor so I'm going to use a bunch of And I'm going to add a little bit of green tea um, just because it adds a little bit of flavor that I like and a little extra caffeine because um, you know sometimes you need a little boost. Um, obviously this is all black tea so it's all caffeinated um, but essentially the, the steps of, of making kombucha are making the tea, fermenting the tea, you, you generally have two fermentations. You've got um, a fermentation in the jar with the scoby and the tea, and, and we'll get to that. Um, anywhere from seven to 10 days, uh, I find anything longer than 10 days, um, if you don't have enough sugar in here, um, the, the yeast eat all the sugar, and then it be, starts to become more vinegar-like than anything, and it's just not, not any good. And then four more days in the bottle. That's the second fermentation after you bottle it. There's lots of different um, uh, kombucha recipes out there uh, that will do, you know, first fermentation, you know, seven to 10 days, second fermentation a week. Some will even go as long as a month. Um, I, in my experience, a month is way too long, um, unless you're adding like a lot of sugar into this because there's, because the yeast in the SCOBY needs something to eat. And if you don't have it, anything to eat, it will turn to vinegar. And it's just, it's not a pleasant experience. Um, so, that's what we're going to do, but step one, this segment one, we're just going to be making the tea. So um, my recipe is a jar the size, and I'll probably post it on the screen here for you at some point so that you know, because I don't know off the top of my head. A uh, jar the size, a cup and a third of sugar. Probably put a cup or so in here. It's not really how much important it is, how much is in here. All you really need is just enough to dissolve the sugar. basically a, a heaping spoon of each of these black teas. Um, I'm going to set this aside on the counter until tomorrow uh, and then we're going to strain it and then we're going to add the scoby from the other batch and a little bit of that and we'll, and we'll, um, we'll bottle the rest of the old batch. We'll walk you through that whole process. And... Greetings! Welcome back! Um, yesterday we made the tea for our kombucha. And as you can see here, it is nice and colored. Um, we added a variety of different black teas and a little bit of green tea. 
Um, and today we are going to do the rest of our process. So I've got another jar here we're going to strain the tea into. I've got all the equipment. I've got our batch of kombucha that's been sitting for, and I've dated it here. What have we got? 713. So it is the 21st. So it's got about eight days. I generally try to go for seven days. Eight, if you let it go another day or so, it's not that big a deal. Um, but when you start approaching 10 days, it's really when you need to um, you really need to watch it. If you let it ferment too long, it eats all the sugar, and then it just becomes this vinegary drink, and it's just it's just no bueno. So um, that's when you really need to start looking at. It. Uh, but I want to go over some of the equipment that we have real quick. I have a variety of these of these types of jars. You can find all kinds of different size jars like this. Again, Google how to make kombucha. You'll find all kinds of stuff. Um, I have a variety of different um, bottles that we use to brew. Remember, this is going to be, we're going to do, we're going to start a new batch, so that's going to be this, the first fermentation. This is the end of the first fermentation, uh, and so we're going to start the bottle and start the second fermentation, which happens in the bottle. Um, in my experience, a good swing top um, bottle for beer brewing or what have you works. The, the only thing that I, I always recommend is the, the, the stoppers here, the little um, the plungers, make sure that those are um, rubber. Sometimes you can find um, a bottles when they're made of like a hard plastic, they don't provide a good seal. Um, it will still ferment fine, but it won't capture in the, the gases and therefore it won't be fizzy. Um, I find that making kombucha carbonated is probably the, the most challenging thing um, that you will encounter. Uh, the rest of this is really easy. When we strain out the stuff, we're going to use a strainer. You've got a mesh strainer like this. Uh, this uh, coupled with um, a, a cheesecloth or something similar. This is actually just a produce bag that we had. Um, it's clear. Um, we've used it to make, as you can see, it, it came it was once white. It is now a very uh, black tea stained brown. Um, but it works well and mesh it. Uh, it's, a, it's a good little mesh. It's reusable. You can wash it out. Uh, works fine. So I'm going to use this to strain the tea. And I usually have this resting on something. If you've got three hands, use them. If you don't, well, do what you can. Um, this isn't, this usually isn't really a messy part, but it can be if you do it right. So I'm just going to, what we're doing is we're straining out all the tea leaves. Uh, Drum roll, please. And we're going to go for it. Of course that didn't work. This is usually not that big of a mess, and I don't know why I did this like this. I should have done it like I usually do, but alas, I did not. And so I'm gonna uh, take a moment to clean this up. Okay. <laughs> we got our big mess cleaned up. My apologies for that. I usually will have the other end propped up uh, on the counter behind me, but that doesn't make for good video, so I try to go off script, and uh, I guess I get what I deserve. Um, and this mass on top, you can see okay, is uh, is the SCOBY. It's, um, it's a lot of layers of stuff that is just kind of gross, and um, if you are a little squeamish, you might have a hard time with this. Um, if, you, <laughs> if you are uh, prone to, you know, being scared of horror movies or what have you, you might want to look away at this time. But I'm just going to grab a hold of this thing. It does feel weird, but it is not. I mean, it is alive technically, but it won't bite. Um, so we're just going to take it out and we'll let it drain a little bit. It's just kind of this big round thing. It will continue to grow layers on top of it. Um, so it's got a layer right here. I can, you know, this is when you can start to, um, you know, uh, peel it off and then, you know, start a secondary batch if you want. You can give it to your friends if you, they want to start their own. Um, I actually have another jar in the cabinet that I've already got a second batch going. Um, so, it, I mean, you could, this thing will just continue to grow. And so eventually it will get too big and um, you can either give it away or you can throw part of it away um, because it will get so big that it will ferment very quickly 
and you won't be able to, um, it's just hard to keep tabs on it. It will ferment it very quickly, it will become vinegary very quickly. So you wanna try and keep it at a reasonable size. Um, and what I usually do um, is write the date on it. And if there's anything about it. So for this, for instance, this particular batch is just a plain batch of, of black tea. Um, you can, uh, when I ordered these jars, uh, they came with a whole set of um, extra gaskets and a little funnel and a little marker. Um, you can use these or if you've got those little markers that you use maybe to write your name on a wine glass, it works just the same. We have a bunch of those as well. But I'm just going to write the date, which is 721. And this one, just it's just plain. Um, that is just going to go in our cabinet to ferment. Um, for approximately seven days. Um, it's best to keep them out of sunlight. Uh, sunlight can kill the bacteria and you do want to keep it at room temperature. So now I've got the batch that we're ready to bottle. And I've got some equipment here that I used to, um, that I used to do this. One of the tricks I like to do, I found this on Amazon too, it's just a, it's just a quick, uh, I'll put it together here in just a moment. Um, but it will be used to, we're going to use to siphon and pump the liquid into the bottles. Now, you can use funnels and you can take this thing and pour it in the funnel. You see what just happened when I tried to do that? So, uh, we found that this was a lot easier and it's easy to clean up. It's a nice little easy thing. It was, it was, it was a cheap, inexpensive tool. Um, but I'm going to, what I, what I like to do when I've got this and I'm ready to, to, um, to bottle it is I like to stir it up because there is a bunch of yeast um, that settles to the bottom and it becomes inactive. You see as soon as I start stewing it, it bubbles up right away. Um, so I like to stir it, all the, stir it up so I can get all the yeast mixed in with the fluid. That way I get an even amount of yeast in each bottle and it continues to help the fermentation. So I'm just going to stick my little tube in here like this to the side. Make sure it goes all the way down. I've got this doohickey here. Connect it. It's still a little wet. Jam it on there. And it's a nice little thing. It's got this little thing at the bottom, so it doesn't let liquid out unless I push it down. So when I push it down into the bottle, then it'll let liquid through. When I let it up, then it stops running, which is important. When you pull it out, you don't want it to be running all over the place because it does create um, a siphon, right? So I'm just going to plunge this down in here. I try to keep these all relatively in the same space that so I don't have to go too far. And here we go. So I'm good with that. this in the sink. Now, I think I closed this up a little too prematurely. Um, I still have some left in here and that's fine because I do need to add some to the new batch to help kickstart the fermentation process. Here, I do want to leave a little bit of room and what I also like to do is sample some for myself. Now, there is some bits in here. It's fine. It won't kill you. The important part, I think, about this is to sample this to see exactly how sweet it is still. I'd say right now it's about perfect for drinking, but it still needs to ferment in the bottle. So if we let it go as is, um, it probably will be a little, a little too vinegary. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to solve two problems. This is a little trick that I came up with. Um, you do want to have some space, um, but you don't want to have too much because if you have too much, then the air, it gives the, a place for the carbonation, the bubbles to escape. Too. So you really only want to have about an inch, inch and a half of space here. Um, so we're going to. Uh, use my little special concoction here, which is a, a sh um, basically a very strong brew of um, cream of Earl Grey, 
um, along with a lot of sugar. And it's just a, a, a strong brew tea, simple sugar, if you will. Uh, and so we're gonna do this for a couple reasons. Number one, again, to close that cap a little bit, but also to add some sugar back into the mix. It will help sweeten it and it will help uh, the second fermentation process. It'll give it some more fuel, some more food for the, um, for the yeast to feed on. And my own little special touch is I like to use cream of Earl Grey um, because it kind of adds sort of like a, um, a cream soda effect to these things, which is kind of it's kind of fun and neat. I use it not just for kombucha, but if I want to make, a, if I have a, um, a carbonated water, I might add it to that. Is that actually a good way to make your own cream soda if you want? You could uh, make this little dash of uh, vanilla extract to give it a little bit of extra flavor. Mix it with some carbonated water. You got yourself, uh, you know, uh, um, a homemade cream soda. And so we're going to close them up. Make sure you get the top on there good. Do you want a good seal on these? You want the carbonation, you want the fermentation to continue and the carbonation to stay in place. Seven days, first fermentation. Uh, um, and then four days um, in the bottle for the second fermentation. Once the fourth day is done, then I stick them in the fridge and um, let them chill uh, get to you know chill down overnight um, I also find that if I let it go another day or two in the fridge it tends to help with the um, with the carbonation I think what happens is um, you know it, it, it continues to ferment in the bottle and when you stick it in the fridge it cools down it slows down the fermentation it takes another day for it to the fermentation to kind of rejuvenate a little bit and then the fermentation the the carbonation kicks up again so um four days in the bottle for sure another day or two in the fridge is fine you could start drinking it right away it's, it's probably just fine but that's just been my general experience i think you'll also find that given where you live uh you know the the weather in your area how hum humid it is how warm how cold what, what you're inside you know the interior of your home is like is it dry is it humid um, it's all going to have an impact on how quickly or um or how long it takes to ferment and, and um, like i you know like i usually say just depends on how the laws of physics work in your kitchen on that particular day i don't know what it is it just seems to be um you know it varies so um we'll probably do some more kombucha episodes i've got another episode where we do um this one is is my tropical um, my tropical recipe where I use some tropical infused teas, um, black tea, um, tropical white tea, tropical black tea, some oolong, um, and some other variations. Um, the one we just created, the plain black tea, we're gonna do. Uh, um, I usually do a blueberry ginger, um, so we'll so we'll sort of macerate some blueberries, a little bit of sugar, some ginger. Um, and we'll do a couple extra days of fermentation, um, but because we're adding that additional sugar, that, that lends us some extra time. So, you know, I enjoy it, and that's you know something to drink, something to do, a little hobby, and of course some nice content for all of you. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.